Hello everybody. In this short video, I'm going to discuss link aggregation on Huawei devices. Um, as I have worked with Huawei for quite some time, so I think it would be great to share my experience with you guys from the vendor's perspective. Uh, so for that reason, um, I am going to share uh, Huawei terminologies for different technologies uh, in our networking world. Um, as we know that Huawei is, is a major player in the world for IT and telecom now. So I believe it's equally important uh, to learn and understand Huawei uh, terms and technologies for uh, telecom and IT uh, issues that we face uh, within our day to day jobs. So uh, in this video, uh, we are going to see uh, what uh, is an Ethernet trunk. Uh, what are the modes for an Ethernet trunk, uh, its configuration, and a little bit of troubleshooting for our LACP link aggregation on Huawei devices. So let's get started and see what we have. In Huawei, link aggregation is called Ethernet trunk. Uh, multiple physical interfaces are bundled into an Ethernet trunk to form a link uh, that increases bandwidth efficiency. Um, now, because this Ethernet trunk is a logical interface, so you have to bind physical interfaces to this Ethernet trunk interface. You can bind uh, one interface, you can bind more than one or multiple interfaces. And that's up to you, up, uh, up to your requirement. Uh, what they do is they they can perform load balancing among its member links. So, for example, uh, in this diagram, we have two devices, Huawei One and Huawei Two. Uh, and we've got four links aggregated in a lag, uh, which is called Ethernet trunk on Huawei. So we've got Ethernet trunk 10. Uh, we've, we bind four physical links to this Ethernet trunk 10 on Huawei 1. And then we've got Ethernet trunk 20 on Huawei 2. Uh, we bind four physical links to this Ethernet trunk 20 on Huawei 2. Uh, obviously, these physical interfaces uh, are become a part of uh, these two Ethernet trunk lag interfaces. So in case of uh, any interface going down, the rest of the interfaces can take over and perform load balancing for bandwidth efficiency. So it's like a normal lag that we create on other, other vendor devices, uh, but in Huawei it's called an Ethernet trunk interface. Now let's have a look at Ethernet trunk modes. Uh, so to start off with, let's have a look at manual load balancing first. Manual load balancing uh, is a mode where one or both devices don't support lag P. So you have to configure the Ethernet trunk interface in manual load balancing and then add the physical interfaces to the lag. All member interfaces uh, will forward data and perform load balancing in this case. Then you have another mode that is called a manual master backup mode. Now this is required where there are intermediate devices between the end nodes of an Ethernet trunk link. Uh, you add two interfaces to each Ethernet trunk interface and then specify the master manually. So these two modes are uh, used for manual load balancing, but the most common load balancing mode for Ethernet trunk is the lag P mode, which we're going to discuss next now. If both devices are LACP compatible, uh, then we configure static LACP mode for an Ethernet trunk. In this mode, uh, the member interfaces perform both load balancing and link backup. LACP PDUs are negotiated for active link selection. Uh, this mode is called M colon N as well, uh, where M is the uh, active number of links and N indicates the number of backup links in an Ethernet trunk interface. Um, it's important to note that the status of member interfaces for a lag uh, in static LAP, LACP can be selected or unselected. So if it's selected, it's going to forward the traffic uh, in a lag. But if it's unselected, for some reason, it's not going to forward the traffic for the lag. Now let's have a look at the Ethernet trunk configuration. So you create an Ethernet trunk interface like any other logical interface. Uh, you add specify MTU for that interface, you specify the description for that interface. Now we have specified uh, lag P static as the mode for this lag. Uh, then you see maximum active link number one. 
so this is a command that you do with a uh, lack p static mode what it does is that it specifies the highest uh, higher number of threshold for active links in a lag so what happens is that if uh, you have uh, an active link number let's say three so as soon as that number is reached uh, the additional links in the lag will start acting as standby interfaces so this is something that you can you can specify as per your requirement then you can also enable stats for your ethernet trunk interface now this is the ethernet trunk interface definition but in order to um, make it active you need to specify or associate a physical interface with this lag so associating a physical interface to a lag uh, is just simple configuration that we do on other vendor devices so we pick up a physical interface that we want to be a part of that lag and then we specify a description or on that interface and uh, you undo shutdown so it's like not shut down on cisco uh, and then you bind the trunk interface that you have created uh, under that physical interface uh, you undo dcn because you don't need that for for your lag interfaces anyway um, the important thing to know is that this is just one interface configuration but you can bind multiple interfaces to your logical trunk interface so you can specify uh, the uh, you can you can actually create same configuration template and you can specify the ethernet trunk interface under each of the physical interfaces that you want to bind to your lag interface um, the ethernet trunk interface is like any other lag interface uh, you can create sub interfaces on that trunk interface um, the sub interfaces can be layer two interfaces or they can be layer three interfaces um, if you're running mpls in your network and uh, you want to bind uh, your trunk sub interface to a virtual uh, service identifier uh, for for example you have vpls or connectivity that you have to give to your layer two customers uh, so you can do that on an ethernet trunk sub interface as well you can also create a, a layer 3 sub interface for your lag and you can bind it to a vrf uh, which is called a vpn instance uh, in huawei so so you can do uh, all all sorts of things with your things with your uh, ethernet trunk lag interfaces uh, i've added something additional here uh, that ethernet trunk bound to an e trunk now this is uh, not the scope of this this session uh, but we will discuss it, it in the next session uh, what is an e-trunk e-trunk is an enhanced trunk that is used for cross device uh, link aggregation so uh, this this one's multi chassis lag p uh, but obviously this is not the scope of this session so we will discuss it in the next session that how do we uh, configure e-trunk and enhanced trunk together to achieve uh, multi chassis uh, lag p uh, connectivity uh, this is going to be another interesting session, I, I, I believe. So, uh, yeah, so we we'll leave it for here and let's have a look at the uh, troubleshooting uh, for an Ethernet trunk uh, lag interface. In order to troubleshoot uh, your Ethernet trunk interface, uh, you can do display uh, Ethernet trunk interface 10. So, in our example, we can see the state information for our lag below. So we can see the, the lag ID is 10 that we configured uh, in the previous uh, slide uh, and then we can see the working mode is static. Uh, if it's static that means it's static lag P that we are using for our lag uh, Ethernet trunk interface. If it's a manual uh, lag then you would see working mode as normal. Uh, but because we have configured static lag P that's, we, that's why we're seeing static here. Then you can see that preemption delay is disabled for our lag. We didn't create any. We didn't create any preemption for the lag interface. Uh, then we have the hash uh, arithmetic. Uh, so this is used for load balancing. The algorithm for load balancing we have set it to default, which is according to the flow. Uh, this is the uh, lag based system priority. Uh, you can specify it manually as well. Uh, we have 155 here uh, system ID for lag P this is this can also be specified manually uh, so you see that we have this system ID configured for our lag, lag P interface um, then we see least active number links and maximum active number links so as we discussed earlier the maximum active number is the higher threshold that you define for your member interfaces in a lag similarly least active number link is the lower threshold that you define uh, in your lag for your member interfaces we've got both one uh, at the moment for the lag 
uh, then we have the operating status now this is something that you need to check uh, to confirm if your lag is up and fine uh, this has to be up for your lag to be working fine so if it's up that means everything is, is fine everything is uh, working as expected if it's down that means the physical interface associated with the lag is down if it's administratively down then that means the lag interface that we've configured is shut down so you have to you have to be careful about the operating status of your lag uh, in order to confirm if your lag is working fine or not then you have the number of up posts in your trunk so because we only added one port for our lag so we can see that we have only one port up in in the trunk and that port is uh, 0 to 10 that we added in the previous slide uh, you see the status is selected so it's going to forward traffic uh, for the lag uh, and then you can see port type and port priority and all that stuff uh, so the the main thing that you have to be careful of is the operating status uh, and the status of your uh, port that is a part of your lag so if these two are working as expected so your lag should should be fine uh, and running as as you expect it to run then uh, there is another handy command for troubleshooting that you can see uh, uh, for your lag p pdus that is to display uh, the lag p stats for your trunk interface for example uh, there can be a situation where your lag is up but you're not able to receive or send traffic uh, on that lag interface so you can view stats for your lag p uh, this would show you the lag p pdu sent and lag p pdus received for your lag interface so uh, this is uh, just uh, uh, basic troubleshooting for your lags on, on Huawei devices uh, then there are more commands as well uh, but they are not the scope of this session uh, so I just want to keep it short and brief uh, but I hope uh, that this has been informative for you and you would have got a good understanding of an Ethernet run interface uh, and uh, the lag configuration on Huawei devices um, in the next session, uh, we will discuss the enhanced trunk, uh, that is the cross device uh, link aggregation. Uh, so we will see how we configure the enhanced trunk with an Ethernet trunk on Huawei devices to, to work for multi-chassis lag P. Uh, I thank you for your time and uh, see you soon again. Thanks. Take care.